two tape recorders today, aren't you? <laughs> no, we tape, I guess whatever they call that. The digital recorders. Yeah. Everybody ready? Yeah. Oh, it's good to be back uh, in the game week. We had a uh, very good practice. The team came, came back, gave them uh, Friday and Saturday off. They came back last night in, in great spirits, um, ready to get back at the task at hand. Um, but more than anything, hopefully what we've been stressing is um, you know, it's important that we have a passion to play. Um, it's more important that we have a passion to prepare and to remember the little things that have, that have gotten us um, on the little mini run that we're on right now. And it's about rediscovering those things now in a game week um, so we can be the best version of ourselves uh, Saturday evening in Little Havana, which is pretty exciting to see the Canes go back um, to the heart of Miami. Uh, be a great occasion for our entire football team, certainly for our fan base. Um, I know it will be for me personally. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Just, you know, I, I can only imagine myself and everybody else as they exit off whatever way you get there, the Dolphin Expressway or, or 95, or maybe just take all the back roads through the city, whatever way Ways sends you. Uh, they didn't have Ways back then, but uh, probably a lot better now that they have it. But it'll be, it'll be fun to turn off um, the Dolphin, head towards, you know, that area, uh, pull in and, and play a football game. We expect a, a great atmosphere. And we're very excited to be a part of this uh, this game Saturday night. So with that, open up for questions. Manny, obviously things are trending in the right direction. There's a lot to be encouraged about the way you guys have played. Uh, but when you found out Saturday about you being eliminated from the Coastal, did 4th and 17, did missed field goals go through your mind at all? Like, damn it, what could have been? And do you think the season can still be a success in your eyes without winning the Coastal? Well, let's, let's unpack that a couple different ways. Um, it doesn't do us any good to think of what could have been. And you can make a further argument that we wouldn't be who we are without those moments happening. So maybe we're thankful for those things. It, it, it hurt at the time. Um, but I don't know that we would have faced the hard truths of what had to get right in this program um, had we batted down a ball on 4th and 17 or had we made a field goal. So um, I think that's a great it – was, it was a great teacher to our football team about the little things that win – and the accountability that wins. Um, so we don't spend a lot of time looking back. Now, in terms of looking forward, which are really, you know, staying in the present right now, which is really the only thing that we can control, uh, when we have done that, we've been pretty good. Um, so you don't really want to spend a lot of time looking back. At the same time, you want to spend time looking forward, and, and, and it's the wrong time right now to try and define what is, to me, a season, you want a team to play as good as it can play. Right, that to me is the goal. Like, how good can this team be? And right now, we know we've got three opportunities left to get the best version of this team. I think the team is improving, like you say, and that's exciting to watch. We have a lot of individuals that are improving, and, and we're coming together. Um, but our best game is still out there. And I think as a coach, that's what you're hunting. Kind of along the coastal lines here, but then if Virginia finishes this off, seven different schools, Well, I think it's up to us um, as a team in, in the division to, to do something about it. The issue is everybody's trying to do something about it, which makes it highly competitive. The ACC Coastal is what it is because of the defense is in this league. It's a defensive league. And if everybody can play defense, then everybody can compete. Bronco Mendenhall is a great defensive coach. Pat Narduzzi is a great defensive coach. Jordy Tech now is a defense coordinator as a red coach. And, and that, that, that's just the, the beginning of it. And there's other teams out there. I mean, that's the whole point. So. Anytime you've got teams that are going to focus on playing great defense, what are the games going to be? They're going to be competitive, right? And so that's a game where anybody can beat anybody because they're going to be low-scoring games or come down to one possession here and there. So, um, you know, obviously Bud Foster at Virginia Tech has been a legend forever. So there's going to be – there's great defensive coaches in this division, and I think that's why it's, it's always a, a difficult road to get through. Hey, Coach. Uh, we've been getting some questions about Scott Patchen and his stat. Is there a chance he can apply for next year? Yeah, that's correct. Scott has the potential to have one more year of eligibility. And are you optimistic that he'll get it or to be determined? 
Uh, no, it, it, it seemed like he would have a good case for getting it, so you can never, you know, be sure of anything. But. Hey, man, just wondering, uh, you know, as a Miami kid, you know, someone grew up here, just the memories that I'll uh, conjure up uh, as, you know, you, you play a game on the ground for the Orange Bowl, or coach a game on the ground for the Orange Bowl. So what are your fondest memories of being in that building growing up? Gosh, there's so many. Um, Dolphins and the Canes, right? You know, I mean, I was there for the A.J. Dewey game in uh, 83, you know, the 14 nothing game. Um, you know, you, you can think of all the great Miami Notre Dame, third and 43 nights, the Miami Florida State, you know, 31 nothing. I mean, there's there's so many Orange Bowl national championships. Um, Michael Jackson thriller, you know, can't, can't, can't leave that out, you know? <laughs> so, come on, all right. Uh, but uh, the stadium's not there anymore, obviously. Uh, the neighborhood is. And I think that's actually the cooler part. I think, I think it's just the trip in. Uh, I think it's being in the area, being in Little Havana, uh, which would be, you know, I think that would be nostalgic for anybody who was there and understands it at the time. It would be great to be back. Hey, just an update on Revan Jordan. How's it going? I know you're optimistic. Yeah, he did more. Uh, and actually, first of all, uh, congrats to Brevin. He was, uh, I think, a semifinalist for the Mackey Award. Uh, for the top tight end, which is certainly well deserved. Um, I don't know who the other guys are, but they've got their work cut out for them. Uh, Brevin did more last night than he's done. Uh, last week, I think that bye week came at a great conference, so I'm still optimistic that'll be good to go. But uh, we're going to continue to progress him as the week goes on. Manny, I wonder what the, the benefits are for you, are for you when to play by you, other than maybe saving money on expenses and not having to travel as far. Um, what, are, what are some of the good things you can get out of it? Um, well, the one, the one thing I know is that anytime schools from in this state play each other, it's a showcase for high school football in this state, and it should be. So uh, whether that was us in Florida, us in FSU, us in FIU, we played FAU a couple years ago. I, I think it's just important that um, it's something that the high school coaches can sit there and they can watch guys on both teams. Um, you know, the families, a lot of the guys know each other. I just think it's good. I, you know, I, I think, you know, high school football in the state is so underappreciated with the, the, the level of coaching that's there and the, and the skill and the talent level that's there. So anything we can do to promote football in the state is a good thing. Do you, do you have to, do you have to in any way to tell your kids maybe the emotions, again, of playing a lot of friends? And I know the brawl is in the past and all that, but still just the idea of these guys knowing each other, and especially FIU wanting, wanting it so bad, wanting to prove themselves? Well, I know our guys want it so bad too. You know, I, I'll, I'll say this, our guys have done uh, a terrific job in the opening game against Florida. They, we all know each other, each other well. That was a very emotional environment. Um, going to Florida State where they, they had kind of had a reputation for being a little chirpy before the game. And uh, our guys, to their credit, have been business-like, they've been professionals. Uh, any situation we've been in, they've handled themselves very well. So to me, the credit goes to them for you know knowing how to handle themselves in those situations. Thank you. Hey, because you guys are scheduled out so far, it seems like this could be, it will be last if you guys play for at least seven We understand why it wasn't for a while, but would you like to see it be an every couple of year, every few year thing, if possible? It's like you said, I don't even know if it is possible. I mean, I, I'm I like playing people in the state, but it is what it is. You know, I mean, I, I know we're, we're we're booked out until like 2048 or something like that. So um, you can ask me that question again around 2047, and we'll see. <laughs> to, to sort of follow up on that, I cringe at this because. Everyone, you can always find a fan to say something one way or another, but there are there is a, a group of fans, a number of them that aren't looking forward to Saturday because they don't want to go back to that site. Right? It's just it's hard, or they want it to be difficult, or whatever. It, it, other than the sentimentality of it's where the Orange Bowl used to stand, should it mean something to fans? I mean, do you think it's do you understand why? I, I, I do, and, and 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 that's why, and you can't tell someone how to feel, right? Because people are going to feel the way that they feel. Um, I don't know if anybody can feel stronger about it than I do, um, but time moves on. You know, uh, the Yankees playing a new stadium. You know, the old Boston Garden isn't there anymore. You know, what I mean, it's just it's just that's how it goes. I think we have as fine of a stadium as anyone in college football right now with what they've done to Hard Rock Stadium. Um, and what we found is when the when 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 the Canes are rolling and the city you know does what it does on a Saturday night, 
the, the, you know, we can play on South East A Street, you know, at, at the, in the intersection, and it's going to be a home field advantage. So, you know, my job is to make sure the team warrants such a big time atmosphere uh, that whether that was back in the OB or whether that's at Hard Rock Stadium, it can, it can happen in this town. Um, so, like I said, it's hard to tell someone not to feel a certain way. You know, we, we all have uh, different emotions on, on that era. Manny, I know Tate's been back working at quarterback. Do you and, and he have a long-term plan about whether the goal is to go back to receiver this offseason to make himself more polished or to stay a quarterback long-term? His, his plan and our plan for him is to play quarterback. Was, was receiver something which you all naturally concluded after a few weeks was not the ideal fit out of that? It was really, it was really, it was really let, letting him dictate, you know, because receiver was his idea at the beginning. That was not something we pushed on to him. And, uh, and going to quarterback was, you know, is what he felt like he wanted to transition back to. And we were fine with that too. Hey, Manny, um, i got a two-part question. Oh. You, you know, you just mentioned the, uh, the Notre Dame game from a couple years ago and what that meant. To the program and the city and everything, would you like to see um, the schedule get a little tougher than maybe it is this year, and next year, in terms of marquee games? Because you haven't really had a marquee game this year that you could bring recruits into and help you, you know, build towards getting better. And then also just the summation of where recruiting is right now, with about a month left to signing day. You've, you know, had the usual comings and goings, and a lot of kids on campus and things like that. Yeah, so just those two things. Uh, the starting point of the schedule is well, we, we did play Florida this year, right? But not here. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah. That's part of you know. Yeah. There are certain things you can control, control that they can't control. And I think starting next year, we're home and home now with a major Power Five team through as long as we were scheduled out. You know, I think next year it's Michigan State. I know we we go play Alabama in two years in Atlanta. So I th I think going forward, it's going to be you know the, the the crossover game this year was Louisville. You know, and I think, you know, three or four years ago when Lamar Jackson up there running around, you know, that, that could have been a big draw type game. So um, the schedule is going to take care of itself. Those things are happening. Um, again, I, to me, to make sure that the top, the top 25 team that shows every week is wearing orange and white, right, the, the Miami Hurricanes. I guess what I meant is, like, you know, because the Coastal is kind of the way the Coastal is, you don't get the marquee, a lot of those marquee games like other programs get that you have to compete against for top shelf recruits. And, you know, would you like to see more of, like, you know, the Notre Dame? I, guess, right, I, I, yeah. I understand your question, but yeah. I guess my point is it's happening. Right. right, those games are all scheduled. Those are all coming. But now let's go play the nostalgia game. Let's go, let's go think back back in the day when either Miami was in the Big East or Miami was an independent team, right? And these things were all just kind of happening. I, I, I'm, I'm with you on your point. Your recruits, what's changed is the unofficial visit. That's what's changed. What's changed is that, is that seniors and juniors on their dime that are making it to all these games – uh, that's with not what happens when Miami was recruiting in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s. That's the biggest difference in what's happened in recruiting. Those games were always taking place in those cities. The recruits didn't have access to those games like they do now. And so that's kind of what's changed. Uh, and, and, and then to, to your point just on recruiting, uh, as I've mentioned over and over again, we're, we're super pleased in our recruiting class right now. Um, as always, there's going to be some shuffling around, um, some initiated by, you know, both sides, let's just say, and we're, we're very excited about where it's going. We've got, uh, you know, we, we had a great little group of guys on our campus last night, and the, the arrow is pointing up. So, again, I can't be more pleased at how our recruiting is going. And, 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 what, and what I like about it is, again, we've got a lot of solid guys in this class. What we have shown, what the team on campus has shown this year, the guys that bleed orange and green, that care about Miami, and that will work and have a passion for this game, end up making plays and being great minded hurricanes. They just do. And so, to me, I feel like we have a lot of those type of guys in this class. I don't want to ask you about your starters for Saturday night, but assuming that you start Shaq under maybe a bit of a tennis. He's, he's got to earn in practice, you know, nothing's given, but yeah, there's a good, good chance. He'll tie Willie Joseph's record with 50 consecutive starts as a cane. Wow. He doesn't miss a play. You know, if we're getting the same games, this kid doesn't miss plays. How, what is it? I mean, you have to be fortunate. Oh yeah. What can you say, sort of, about his his durability? And I'm sure there's a bit of I'm sure it's pride issue for him. He doesn't want to get plays off. He doesn't want to come out of the game. His his conditioning level right now is as good as any player I've ever seen. Certainly at the linebacker position. Um, you know, we wear these monitors. You can you can sort of track the distance they cover. You can track the the work rate that they do during the game. And 
And the game that really stands out to me is Pitt. I mean, I could pick any, but in the Pitt game, there were a couple plays where they broke out a run with QB sprint. I mean, I'm talking about Shaq made 50-yard all-out sprints to try to save a touchdown or whatever, and and then the next play is still playing at high level. I mean, I mean, his ability to, to empty the tank and then somehow, you know, find the wherewithal and the energy to reload it for the next play and to continue to play at a high level is it's really extraordinary. His will right now, and that's why I say in the last month, the guy's just gone into the stratosphere in terms of linebacker play. And his will right now to be great um, is, is you know, when, you, when people, when coaches throw around words like competitive excellence, you know, and, and you know, everybody kind of use that sounds good. He is right now the epitome of what competitive excellence uh, means. The question better serve to him, but the fact that his name is going to be forever and ever in your record, but a top at least one list and probably a few others too, what do you think that means to him? I think it's very important to him. You know, we said all along at Shaq, um, it's very important him, to him uh, to get Miami to the level that he thinks it has. You know, he, he is a true cane and bleeds orange and green, like I mentioned. Um, but he also wants to leave a legacy. He, he wants to be a guy that, you know, when we're recruiting young linebackers four years from now, they want to look up to Shaq Quarterman. And so the fact that he can put his name on the wall uh, with a record like that, uh, that means a lot to him. We'll do two more for coaches. Manny, since mid-August, you've had five players leave who want more playing time. It's not the least bit uncommon. That's the way college football is today. Mm -hmm. A couple of those might not have played very much long-term. A couple might have. Do you ever believe that if you get wind of a player thinking of transferring, that you should tell your assistants to play the guy a little bit more to keep him transferring? Or would that go against everything you stand for? And should there be a cooling off period from the time a player tells his coach, I want to go into the portal, to the time that he's actually allowed to be in the portal? Should colleges have that advantage of having a couple of weeks just to let the player mull it and the coach and the player discuss it? Right. Um, there actually is a 48-hour period uh, okay. where, where the, the college does have you know, can hold the player before he, they submit his name into the portal. Um, this is this is new territory for all of us, and, and the difference is not transferring. Transferring is not new. The portal is just a fancy name. Kids have transferred forever and ever. Um, I think that the unique thing all around college football now is that it's happening during the season, right? When there's really nowhere you can go. All these kids still have to finish out the semester on campus where they're at. Uh, they're basically just not coming into the football building anymore. And they just said this is happening in every program all around the country. Um, you know, if you went in front of your football team and said, we're going to play Johnny, even though Johnny has not warranted playing time, you have a chance to lose credibility as a coach because the locker room always knows. The locker room knows who should play. The locker room knows. The, the, the players, you can't fool the players. You know, a player can try to fool a coach every now and then to get away with it, but they can never fool the players. So, um, you know, I, I think that's all part of it. Now, the issue, again, part of this is that, you know, it takes a lot of persistence. It takes a lot of hard work. We have so many Miami Hurricanes that have come through here uh, former players have told our guys, you know, like, I mean, I had to wait this long, and I was playing this guy, I never thought I'd play, I was going to transfer, I stuck it out, da da da, -da. Those, those, those stories um, sometimes sound like old folklore, you know, back in my day, you know, that type of stuff, but it's still true. It's still true, and uh, and it's still fun to see guys that have, uh, you know, again, we, we can look at examples on our football team, I know I've, I've sung his praises all year, but a guy like Rod Knowles, you know, right now is playing as, you know, as good as any safety we have on our team. Um, had every reason to leave. He stuck it out and worked hard and he's turned himself into the best version of himself, which is pretty awesome. Daniel. Great. 